Hi, I'm Eli. Uh, I'm an Olympic hopeful. I've been a member of the Senior Canadian National Fencing Team since about 2013. This is my brother and coach, Joseph Shankel. Uh, we've been fencing for quite some time, and we've seen a lot of really great content online about distance and tactics and fencing. Um, a lot of very basic videos about movement, but we're hoping to explain how we see fencing um, for some people who might want a little bit of uh, extra tactical insight, uh, as well as a few different perspectives on form that a lot of people may or may not agree with. Yeah. And if you don't agree, that's fine. Please comment on the video, share your thoughts. Um, we are just trying to learn as well. Um, one of the things that we really appreciate, or at least I really appreciate about my brother's style, is that it works for anyone. Doesn't matter if you're six foot eight, six foot eight or five foot seven like me. There is a way to hit your target, and that's one of the beauties of this sport. Doesn't there's no weight classes, there's no subdivisions. It's if you have a blade and you're old enough to fence that age group, you can go for it. So that being said, we're going to talk about the basics of fencing. And first thing we're going to demonstrate, my brother's going to demonstrate on guard, and I want you to think about why this might be how we handle our swords. I'm going to go grab him a foil. And as you can see, this is basic on guard, right? Guard is a lack of tape. Yeah. Okay, so this is basic on guard. As you can see, it kind of looks like a crab. kind of looks a little bit silly. So right now, I want you to just pause the video and think, why the, why the heck would he do that? Why the heck would, would he do that when you see in movies and Star Wars all this stuff, all this stuff, why not here, why not here? Why would he do that? Alright, why not behind the back? Uh, Alright, so now let's think about it and let, I want you to try and experiment with me. Okay, so when I clap my hands, and I want you to do this with my brother, Actually, when I clap my hands, he is going to run as fast as he can. If I clap, he's going to switch directions. And he's going to keep trying to run as fast as he can. Ready? You can do this with him. Set, go! And stop. So as you can see, my brother's a pretty athletic guy. He trains every day, he lifts. But changing directions is kind of slow like this. Okay? Now we're going to try the same exercise, not even in full on guard. You're going to face forward, you're going to bend your knees a little bit, he's going to bend his knees a little bit, and he's going to try the same exercise just going side to side. We'll see if there's a difference. Ready? Go! Oh. As you can see, hopefully you learned something from that, there's a change in direction. His max speed isn't going to be that high, but are you going to be running at your opponent like this? No. You're going to be doing really nice, easy stuff. And the change in direction is, is the main reason we get an guard. However, there are other advantages. So you have to face the camera. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to talk about in terms of actually holding our foil, so I'm sure you guys have seen other videos about your own guard, and actually really quickly we're going to go over that. You're right-handed like me. Just put your feet together. Move them about shoulder length apart. Looking this way. And now pivot your foot forward. Your front foot, which would be your right foot, forward. And now just pretend like you're going to sit. Okay? Personally, I don't like to leave my heel on the ground, so I lift it. But that is completely personal preference. Okay. Traditional style. Back arm is up here. But you can just leave it dangling if you're a bit more experienced. Okay. Now, my hand, you might notice, is not in the same line as my foot. And we're going to show why. Can you grab that plane? So my hand is what's called in sixth position. I'm defending this side of my body. If I attack my brother, and hopefully you can see this in the video, and I try to go to this side, he can push it away really easy. Yeah. I'm not even moving, and he's blocked, and I've blocked already. A lot of people have their hands when they defensive here. The problem with that is that now this side's open, he actually has to respond to it, yes. otherwise he's gonna get hit. So instead of just having to defend this side of my body, Show the threat. Instead of just defending here, I also need to defend the other side. And someone who's moderately good should have the point control to move their blade around my arm if I leave it like this. We have to learn how to move, okay? And one thing I want to stress here is that what you're about to do is very difficult. It's counterintuitive, okay? This is not how humans are normally move. It's going to actually get your leg muscles pretty strong. And the first maybe 100 times, 200 times, 1,000 times you try to move like this, 
you're gonna think, why, this is not fast, I'm doing horribly. And that's because it's kinda like a video game. Right now, you're learning your controller, okay? So you can't move in Fortnite, right? You can't move in COD really easily if it's the first time you try to. Apex, 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 please, my, my bad. Apex, Halo, whatever, doesn't matter, Super Smash. When you move, you're an unguard, you're sitting low. Sitting low is the most important thing because this is our spring, this is our power. If we're not sitting low, you're doing this. And this is slow. So you're going to try your best, sit low, you're going to lift your toe, half step forward, down, and finish your step. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. If you have a partner, your mom, your dad, your brother, your friend, whoever, you can practice with them. Yeah. When I move forward, he's going to move back. We're trying to keep the distance between us the same with every step. So I'm not trying to be lazy. If he takes a big step forward and I take a small step back, now he can hit me. I, hit he need, I need to match his movement. Great. And you can practice this forever. Yeah. This is always great exercise. Yeah. Another drill you can do is simply taking a tiny step forward, a bigger step forward, and a big step forward. And doing the same thing with the reverse. When we move backward, our toe comes out, we touch it to the floor, and we finish. It's important that we start with our back foot, because if my brother is attacking me and all of a sudden he stops, and now I waste a step going back, now I have to make up that step later. If I can just stop myself when he stops, now I'm gonna have an extra step to be able to chase and hit him. All right, yeah. You can also, another really easy exercise, like he's suggesting, you can play with the size and the speed of your steps. Sometimes, even if I'm going one direction, I might want to do a quicker step. Notice I'm not doing quick steps really big, because if I'm getting really close to my opponent really quickly, I might not be ready to hit, and they can get me. Yeah. So for example, what my brother's saying is if he takes a big fat step, and he can take here, I've now hit him before he's even extended his arm. Like we're going to see with our attacks, the most important thing when attacking is that our tip is ready to finish. So that being said, let's get started with attacks. First thing, before you can even attack with a lunge, let's try simply extending our arm, okay? To attack in fencing, you're gonna use your two fingers, doesn't matter what you, which kind of blade you have, if you have a pistol grip like this, or a French grip like this, either way, it's like a grilled cheese sandwich, like they teach you in school, uh, cheese in the middle, bread on the side, cheese in the middle, bread on the side. The reason for this is just like a pencil, you wanna be able to control the tip. The so first thing we're going to do is really easy. You're going to go tip forward. Notice that none of me is moving except for my tip. And when you hit, you're going to open up. Opening up does two things. Number one is if I'm here and I don't open up, watch what happens as soon as I open up. I can now reach where I couldn't reach yeah. before. He hasn't hit me, and now I'm he has, even though he hasn't yeah. hit me. The other thing it does is it actually makes me harder to hit. If I just leave myself here, look at how open I am. I'm here, open here. I actually narrow my body when I extend it with an open position. That's why in classic fencing, you see this thing, right? When they attack, they open up fully. And this other hand is acting as his counterbalance, so he's not gonna fall over. Yeah. If he does this, it's way easier to fall over, and that's what a lot of kids do when they start. So we're gonna do a few exercises to get us started. So first thing I want you to do, is I want you to, you don't even, you, I'm just, you're just gonna extend five times, really making sure you're not punching. So this is a terrible thing. If my brother took a step back, take a step back, where's my tip, right? If I do a good extension and he runs away, I should be able to chase him with my point. If I'm doing this, I'm gonna hit nothing. And that's another reason why we keep our elbows tucked. Because if you do what I call chicken arm, you're gonna miss. All right, so after we've done our extension, I want you to then lift your toe about halfway through your extension. So one, toe, and then when you open up, you're gonna push with this leg, kick with this leg, okay? It looks easy, but it might be kind of hard at first. So we'll do one of my favorite drills for this exercise. You're gonna take a coin, okay? Forget your blade, you put your coin on a surface that can slide. I'm gonna go back here so you can see. You're gonna put your heel on that coin. And if you do a good lunge, starting with your arm, that coin should go forward. This is gonna make sure that your foot catches you, because if you're using your legs to so if I'm doing something like this, don't worry, I'm not going to you. If I'm doing something like this, yes, I've reached him, but my tip isn't launched. If he, if he takes a step back when I'm doing this, I'm going to hit. I'm not going to be able to reach him. So it's very important that you start with your finger. Another exercise you can do to make sure that you actually hit your target 
And this is going to require your mom, your dad, your friend. Because you're going to hit the glove. Okay, ready? So my brother's going to lean with his hip. He's going to follow me. When I drop the glove, he's going to hit it. Notice that he's close enough to where he didn't have the weapon. You cover? Okay, now he's a little bit further. Boom. Excellent. You cover? And then finally, what if the glove is very close? Boom. He's going to hit it. So that's something you can do by yourself to get your lunge up to speed. Now the last thing we're, last couple things we're gonna cover. A uh, quick note, and this is something not everybody might agree with, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Personally, what I like to fence, instead of just having my blade and my arm in a single line, I like to tilt my point a little bit in, depending on the type of opponent I'm fencing. If I'm fencing a righty, it's gonna tilt a little to the left, because that way, when I extend, I'm gonna hit, and it's gonna land dead on, like this, as opposed to sliding. So okay. to demonstrate that, you guys are going to stand still, and again, remember safety first kids. We've been doing this for a while, so hopefully I won't stab him in the face. If I hit him like this, and he dodges, so this is my arm just going straight like a punch. I'm just throwing my hand out, watch. If you, you can't see it from the side, but I, I was target locked, and just by moving the body, I missed. Now if I do the same hit, and I put an angle on it, so hopefully now, this is my first attack, this is going to be my second from here. You're going to see that it actually sticks in place. And even though he dodged, it's a lot easier to stick the target. Okay? Now finally, let's get to defending. Okay? And this one is very interesting, and again, I want to hear your opinion. We want to hear your opinion on it. Bruce Lee based a lot of his Kung Fu stuff, uh, or his Jeet Kune Do on fencing. It actually means way of the interrupted fist, or something to that effect. When you move, and I want you to pause the video here, if he attacks me, is it better for me to block? Or is it better for me to move back? Take a second to think about it. Alright, great. Eli's going to attack me now, and I'm going to block. Okay, I blocked. This is how we're going to teach blocking. You step back, and you parry. The cost to this, economy motion is all about every movement has a cost and a benefit. I'm safer from having blocked, but now it's going to take me an extra stroke to find this target. Now let's do the same thing. If he attacks me and I just step back, I don't have to waste my time finding repositioning my blade, I can just hit him. So ideally, if you're really, really super pro and a Jedi, you're just getting out of the way. Or a okay? sick. Or a sick. Whatever you want to do. Alright? So, to practice parries, we're going to step, he's going to lunge, and now from here, right, my tip is over his shoulder, my hand should be out in front of me but not fully extended, and now, based on how far away he is, I'm just going to poke him. Now I have to lunge him to do that. Okay? If he gets really close, like do a super big lunge, he does a super big lunge, and I got the distance wrong, and I try lunging now, watch what happens. I'm gonna miss it. Yeah. Alright guys, so now we're gonna cover a little bit of defense, and the reason we're shooting it this way is because it's very important to understand my brother's hand position. Okay, you'll notice his hand is actually cocked a little bit out of his, his, uh, his, his center line. So I'm not here. He's not here, he's there. And the reason is because, hold on, let me just get my blade really quick. The reason is that if I attack him, right, here's my blade, if I attack him on this side, I can't, I can't actually find the target. He can just push it away now very easily with very limited extra motion. If I attack him on this side, he can, attack, he can parry very easily. If you hold your blade in the middle, or like low, like some people have, tra have taught, now if I attack him on this side, I can actually go through and it forces him to actually have to defend this way. So now he has to block in what's called six. This is four. All right, so that's why we have part of the reason we have the angle the way we have. And now, pay attention. Right now, I'm doing it sort of the wrong way, but this is what a lot of people will teach, where my elbow is basically touching my body. Now, if he attacks, so me, his elbow is basically touching his body. If he attacks me now, and he does a fake, but I react, and I just move my hand to the side, I need to go to the side again. So yeah. I'm stuck so he's he's head. basically stuck pivoting. Okay. The way we teach it is in a second. Uh, There's gonna be a little. Yeah. So now, if he attacks me, and I block, and he goes around, I still have time to go to this side and bring my arm closer yeah. if need be. So here, do like three this Okay, so for example, it's going to look like this. One, two, three is my actual shot. He still has plenty of time. If he has to, he can, he can bring his hand back. But if his arm starts back, he's not going to have that time. Now I'm limited to which yeah. out here. I can search, I can search, and let my arm go back. Yeah as he avoids my blade. Yeah. Okay, and now lastly, when do I want to do this? Am I going to be safer if he attacks me? Am I safer just by blocking? 
Pause the video to think about it. Okay, I'll pause. I guess you've unpaused already, but no, the answer is for me to be even safer, I should just step back. Yeah, this is the ultimate form of defense, because now let's pretend he parried. If he parried the way we just taught, okay? Great, he has my blade, and he ha he did a good parry. His arms in front of him, all that good my stuff. But look, his tip is over his, his his tip is over my shoulder. All that good stuff. It's easy for me. It's to easy for him to hit him, for for him to hit me. But if he to do that, he still has to reposition his blade all the way back here, which is an extra stroke. Now let's pretend instead of blocking, he actually steps back during my attack. His tip is already on me. That's as fast as it's gonna get. So, economy of motion is the idea that every move has a cost and a benefit. I'm not saying one parry is better than the other. If you block well, you block well, and you're gonna have a nice control of their blade, you're gonna be safer at the cost of that extra stroke. If you just step back knowing what they're gonna do, then obviously you're gonna be faster but less defended. So when you fence, my biggest advice is to think about every single thing you're doing, including your steps as you're doing them. Don't move unless you have to. Don't move unless you have a plan. Now, just to show the coordination of the parry, uh, this is going to be from side view. My brother's going to start with his back leg, right? Because that way, later on when we show you more complicated things, this is going to make a lot more sense. But he wants to create space yeah. before he parries. First, pause the video and think, should I parry here? Or should I parry here? Or should I parry at the start of the step? Yeah. All right, unpause the video. The correct answer, or at least in our opinion, is to make the space first. Because if you look at him at either the start or the, or the halfway point of his step, his target, right? This, especially where most fencers are taught to, to hit, that hasn't changed that much. But if he completes his step, so if I do this, yeah, the target is still the same spot. it's still pretty much the same spot. If he does that, then it's completely different, and his blade is now where his target would have been, making the defense a lot stronger. All right, guys, we uh, really enjoyed making this video. We hope you learned something. If you'd like to try to beat us and you maybe disagree or want to try the things that you've learned, come check out uh, Dynamo Fencing, which is backward on this, but Dynamo. Uh, we have a Richmond location in Vancouver as well as a North Vancouver location, so feel free to check us out at either of those. Uh, we big shout out to Misha Itkin, our original coach. Uh, if and you like Angeles, in Los Angeles, National Fencing yeah. Center. So yeah. If you guys are in LA, be sure to check out that club, one of the best in the world. With That's where we learn. We both learned there. Uh, big shout out to La uh, Jakob Laszlo uh, at Durham uh, in the northeast of England. Uh, back when we were studying uh, our master's programs, that's where we learned, and it's a great club. Yeah, and also can't forget about New York. Uh, go to Fencers Club or Manhattan Fencing Center. Both are amazing institutions with some of the best coaches in the world and uh, amazing fencers for you to learn from. Yeah, uh, yeah, that concludes this, guys, and uh, we'll see you next time where we'll go over some more advanced stuff. This and is a crash co course. and Yeah, don't forget to, uh, if you guys have any disagreements or anything you learn anything you want to try just feel free to let us know in the comments like subscribe you, you've seen youtube yeah you, you know you know the drill all right catch you guys next time later gators